Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samad, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut out or composite figures in Photoshop using my preferred technique. It's not the easiest and it's not the fastest way, but I believe it gives the sharpest results for creating professional photo manipulation work. If you're new here, welcome. This isn't your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art, and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out five videos a week. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my chosen method for cutting out figures for use in photo manipulation and compositing work. I'm not going to say it's the be all and end all or the absolute best method you can use. It's just been my go-to for a good number of years now and I think it'll be helpful to share this video in future longer walkthroughs because I use this process a lot. So the way that I approach cutting out figures is I create a new layer and make a mask. So I'll go around the solid areas with the pen tool and fill that with white. I create another layer and I create a selection around the hair and fill that with white also. I then make a selection with refine edge, get the soft edges of the hair and then load in the selection of the hard objects like the body, uh, the weapons, the boots and combine them together. Now at the beginning I know that can sound quite complex but I'm gonna guide you through the whole process and show you how it's done now the first thing i do is as you can see there's two layers here there's a background layer and a duplicate of that above that on a layer stack for the background this isn't essential by the way this is just what i like to do for some reason i always prefer to have a gradient background instead of solid white or solid black especially when you're working with hair it kind of replicates uh, a photographic image or something a, a bit more defines than just a white or black solid background so for step one create a new layer and i'm going to call this new layer solid mask and this is pretty much the process i go through every time i do this all the time in my professional book cover work i zoom in i hit p for pen and i click along and create a path around the entire object all of the solid areas so i'm going to leave the hair it's only going to be the solid areas now if you're not familiar with the pen tool at this point i have to say you should really get your head around this because in raster graphics software or bitmap based software which photoshop is there's nothing better and nothing sharper than the pen tool which works on a bezier system it does have its quirks it's quite difficult to get your head around it if you're brand new but once you learn the physics of how the pen tool works, then your future pen tool adventures will be a lot, lot easier. I'm actually gonna do a dedicated video on the pen tool. So if you're watching this at a later date, then that video may already be in the description below. So as you can see, I'm following the path around a solid object. And what I'll be doing at this point is zipping into some time-lapse magic so I can go all around the object and then complete the path and fill that path with white. So let's bounce into that right now. Okay, so we're just getting to the end of the path here and I'm going to go across and finish the path by clicking and you'll notice that the icon changes I'm just going to do that once more just so you can see it the pen tool goes has a small circle and that's to close the path I'm just going to zoom out a bit now so you can see the path going around the figure you'll notice that there's big blocks left there we'll deal with them in a minute okay so you may be thinking the, the pen tool just seems long and cumbersome laborious yes I'm not going to lie this is not the fastest method in the world for cutting out figures but to me and the style of work that I like to do I specialize in photorealism and in the creative industry there's a certain standard that you need to work to so for me uh, this technique works really well but with the path filled 
we've got the solid mask there on the layer stack right click go fill path and then choose white i'm gonna hit okay there and you can see the path is filled in white we haven't gone around the hair and we'll get into that in a minute but we still have a bit more work to do we have to go in we have to get all of these gaps and remove them so once again a bit of time like magic will bounce into that okay so we've got all of these paths closed on these gaps and we have the solid mask layer active I'm gonna right click on there and go make selection hit OK by pressing enter and then delete to remove those gaps from the mask itself so we have the solid mask in place for the next part of the process what we'll do is we'll repeat what we did for the solid mask uh, we'll use a slightly different tool to go around and create a mask for the hair but before we bounce into that i'll just like to do a shout out for where the stock image came from this is from the action thriller stock bundle by neo stock um what i'll do is i'll put a link to that in the description below so back on to the tutorial process what we need to do now is create a new layer we're going to call this one hair mask and instead of using the pen tool we don't need to use pen tool because it's it's not a sharp area we could be a bit more loose with that hit l for the lasso tool uh, just make sure that it's the free hands lasso and not polygonal or magnetic i'm going to get the free hands lasso tool and just using a mouse just going to trace around now this doesn't have to be perfect all we want to do is create a rough outline around the hair now when you're dealing with hair or soft objects there's a lot of different approaches to take but pretty much all the processes i use do start with creating a rough outline of the hair itself so i'm using the mouse i'm freehand drawing with the lasso tool to add to this selection i hold down shift grab a couple of strands i don't want to take every single small strand they're not really needed just a couple of the thicker strands so we'll go through we'll grab them and i hold down alt key to if i need to remove anything so we'll get that going just remove that little sliver there and then with the shift press down shift to add to that selection and what we're going to do is we're going to create a selection around all of the hair we're going to zoom out using command and minus and if you are on a pc anytime i say command literally just replace that with control so we have a selection now around the hair one more zoom out command and minus and as before fill that selection with white i like to use shortcuts wherever possible so that is alt and delete and there we have the hair mask so we have a solid mask and we have a hair mask now what i want to do is command and click that hair mask layer and go to the refine edge tool now with newer versions of photoshop sometimes the refine edge isn't accessible the reason why i use an older version of adobe photoshop cc is because i really like the way that this Revi refine edge uh, palette dialog box displays I, I just think they got it right and i don't know why they changed it but if you have a version of photoshop where you can't access this I'm going to post a link in the description uh, by my esteemed colleague Clinton Lofthouse showing you how you can access refine edge functions no matter what version of uh, CC that you're using. So we've got the refine edge up. What we're going to do is we're going to come out of that. The marching ant selection is active. What we need to do is click onto the image that we want to work with. Then we hit refine edge. And there you can see it's already created a mask and the only value you really need to tweak is the radius so i'm going to pull that forward and it's giving you a bit of a radius there now i've done another video tutorial which you'll see below in the description that goes through all the little tricks and hacks that you can use for dealing with hair so if you want to learn more all the information is below i've made a dedicated video light hair and dark hair there, there are different ways to approaching but i'm going to show you one of the tricks from that video today 
I normally only ever use radius. I very rarely go to a shift edge, contrast, feather or smooth. And then I just hit OK. There you can see that selection is active. Now this is the fun part. Because we created those dedicated mask layers, what I'm going to do is add this hair selection to the solid mask selection. And there's a nifty little shortcut for that. It's Shift Command. And there you can see the icon on the hand changes. So Shift Command and then click that hidden solid layer. Now with the stock image active, all I can do is go Command and J and bang, there you have it. In one click, in one shortcut, the entire stock image has been copied onto a new layer. You've got the edges that are super sharp. Let's just zoom in. You do not get better than that in Rasa software. Photo, um, the pen tool is king for sharp objects. I don't care what anyone says. And for the hair, you can see these edges are soft as opposed to sharp. Now you may be thinking, yeah, that's all well and good, but what about this white stuff up here? I'm gonna throw in a little bonus hack or a quick trick. I'm gonna go Shift Command and N, hit OK. And this is a blank layer above the composited image that we just did. Hold down Alt and click. That will turn that into a clipping mask. And then with the clone stamp tool, that's a pretty decent size, I think. I'm gonna sample the black of the hair and then just go up on this fringing. This fringing here, I don't like it. It looks ugly. It doesn't look accurate or real. And I'm gonna grab those dark tones. And because this is on a clipping mask, all of the work that I'm doing now is limited to the constraints of the layer below. So let's just do this for the blonde hair as well. There's loads of other tricks for working with hair and compositing hair. So if you're interested in learning more about this, what you can do is just check the video below and I share all of my sneaky secrets. So that's okay. I'm just gonna merge that down quickly by going Command and E, Control and E if you're on a Windows. And if there's any other scrappy bits, like there's a bit of pixel degradation here, add a layer mask, hit B for brush, I'm going to change the brush size using the square back brackets on the keyboard. So let's give that a go. And then take these edges down just a touch. You don't want to overdo it. Just the absolute edge of the brush just to get some of this pixel degradation out. We're going to go command and zero to zoom, to zoom out. Take one more look. Let's have a look at this right side of the hair. That's looking okay as well. So there you have my preferred method for compositing figures. And again, I'll say it's not the fastest way. It's not the easiest way, but in 20 years of doing freelance digital art, I believe it is the sharpest method for compositing figures. So I hope you found that one useful guys. That will do it for today's video. I hope to catch you at the next one. See you then.